Expats from all around the world come to the United Arab Emirates, drawn by a growing economy, the promise of tax-free income and a dynamic jobs market. But is this really a country where everybody gets rich, or is there another side to the expat experience? Clearly the Emirates has a lot of attraction for many people around the world, uh, and in particular professionals, because it's such a dynamic place to be, so you can really push your career forward. I think obviously some of the, the big attractions at that professional level is that maybe in other parts of the world there could be a high tax situation to consider where here in the Emirates we have a zero taxation regime which is of course very attractive indeed. That said, uh, direct taxation, which, which we all know about income tax etc, uh, is not here. However, indirect taxation, i being charged things through other means, is very very prevalent. So if you think you're coming here and if you're used to paying 30-40% uh, tax somewhere else and you think you're going to put that in your pocket, uh, that will be whitted away by other costs which are in this part of the world and naturally we hear all the time on the on the local press about the, the cost of rents going up, the cost of living going up, whether it's schooling, food and so on and so forth. And of course this has an eroding factor on your, on your pocket at the end of the day. I mean I think that's uh, probably the most pervasive myth about the Gulf is that you come here you're rolling in bank and then all of a sudden, um, you know, you go home, you've got tons of cash. That sort of thing is actually, in my opinion, so inaccurate. Uh, from what I've seen from even myself, uh, friends of mine, mostly expats uh, from North America and some from Europe, uh, they spend uh, probably on par with their full income, if not more. So I know a lot of people who are actually living in debt and on debt continuously. Uh, I know a lot of people who say they're living paycheck to paycheck. There is alternative tax, we call it alternative tax, that are always, there's always money that's being paid out. And certain things like utilities bills are extremely high, education, housing costs, you know, the basic fundamental building blocks of being able to live everyday life are immensely expensive. There's an expectation that because the UAE is seen as a very Western environment, that things will be much like they are back in Europe or North America, Australia, where people have come from, and that is not the case. And I think there's also a surprise at the sheer number of fees and charges that we pay for so many different things, and they very much mount up for people. Property is proving to be one of the main cost of living burdens. Rental costs have been climbing steeply, while new regulations have made it harder for expats to purchase their own property. Certainly on, a, on the rental income side, um, a considerable number of expats are really concerned about um, paying higher rents. Um, and I think 58% are really concerned that rental income um, is stopping them from f planning for the financial future. In terms of buying versus renting, this is a very high market for cash purchase. So you'll get a lot of investment in this market and about 54% of this market is actually cash, which is very high. And what we're seeing in the cash element of the market is uh, people are going back into under construction mortgages. But when you look at expats in particular, the government here, the central bank, have put more sustainable policies in place for people taking out mortgages. So they have to put a bigger down payment. And if you're going for a typical three bedroom um, villa in the UAE, it will cost roughly about $900,000. Um, and with the higher down payment now, the regulations, you have to put 25% down. And with the ancillary fees, you need to find $300,000 just to get started here. Education is a second big cost of living shock. School fees increase sharply between primary and secondary school. In Dubai, for instance, average fees for international schools can double when children reach secondary school level, rising from around $11,000 a year to $22,000 a year, which is higher than secondary school fees in Sydney. 85% of expats surveyed by HSBC claim the overall cost of raising children is now more expensive in the UAE than it was in their home country, compared with the global expat average of 66%. Certainly my experience out in the Emirates, and I've been here 20 years now, is that one of the biggest challenges for any parent is finding a good school or finding a school because the demand is so high. Um, what I've seen as well, and I've personally felt this, is that the cost of education has risen steadily, dramatically. And certainly figures that we look at worldwide is that uh, the cost of a private education is probably running about three to four times the rate of inflation. So it's a, it's a cost now that's becoming higher and higher. And also the traditional expatriate packages that people used to enjoy included things like schooling. A lot of those have now come out. Uh, and so again, whilst the headline rate on your package, if you're an expatriate looking to work overseas, looks attractive, when you start pulling out those things on cost of education, what are you actually left with net-net is getting less and less and less. Clearly, there are still financial benefits to the UAE, otherwise it would not be attracting so many expats from around the world. 
So what about those who are able to put money aside? What do they do with it? From building up a pension pot to remitting money home to families and loved ones, there are interesting differences in expat financial behaviour, depending on where they come from and the types of job they hold. While the objective might be the same, uh, the pattern and the financial behaviour of different nationalities are not the same. Uh, if you are from South Asia, you're going to behave in a different way than if you are from Western Europe when it comes to what you do with your money. If you are from the Arab world, you're going to have even a different pattern the, there. So the idea is to look at what do people do with their money. Definitely, they take part of it and send it for remittance, send it for support for their loved ones. Uh, but the percentage is different. Because if you are from South Asia, you might be sending, or Southeast Asia, you might, you might be sending 80 to 90% of your earnings to your loved ones. If you're from Western Europe, uh, it might not be for support, but you're sending back for savings, you might send 30% of, uh, of what you make. If you look at um, remittances, sending money back home, um, a Western expat will send money back home, um, could be paying for school fees back home, kids at boarding school, um, will typically be sending money back home to build up some kind of retirement fund. Asian expats um, tend to send money back home for families, but they also are in very interested in purchasing properties. Uh, and they will um, go into investments and, and generally speaking, uh, are actually looking at taking more risk. Investing uh, in, in your home country when you're an Indian is definitely a priority, but uh, it does relate to the, to the job that you, uh, that you hold. If you are a blue collar worker, it's going to be difficult for you to send back to invest because what you are making is basically being eaten up by the support to the family and what you need in order to, to survive yourself. But if you are a white collar worker, uh, and I have seen that with many uh, colleagues and NRIs, uh, the non-resident Indians, it is India represents a very good opportunity for investment. Remittance flows to South Asia are increasing as more professional workers migrate to the UAE especially from India. If you look at the, the flow of uh, uh, different kind of migrants coming into the country, there has been an evolution in the last 20 years. You are seeing now, you know, more professionals, uh, uh, like, you know, who are, are qualified accountants, lawyers, doctors, because healthcare is becoming a very important uh, uh, destination of do that. The bankers, the banking community, the ecosystem is uh, getting bigger. So naturally, the profile of the migrants coming into the country has to undergo a change and which has undergone a change. Whether you come from the East or the West, the lessons are clear. While the UAE offers an attractive financial opportunity, expats must be prepared for a range of personal finance challenges if they wish to use their time here for long-term gains.